Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi. And welcome to... Another episode of Cut the Tape. I am Rick Alvarez. Thank you so much for being here today. You know, I'm just getting ready to uh, open up some toys and I'm looking at the quality of my tools and I'm thinking it's time to, uh, to change the blade. Yup. It's time to change the blade. I have a certain set of tools I keep set aside just for toys. Um, knives, sharp sticks, uh, blunt rocks that I use, different things to open packaging. Today, I thought it would be all about gift sets. So I've pulled a few gift sets uh, from my pile of stuff that I have to open and I thought hey, let's uh, My secret shame go bots uh, This is actually a sealed That's a sealed Zod I forget how I got that price tag says $7.99 marked down from $9.99 anyway gift sets Let's start with this. This is a Transformers Robots in Disguise, Robots in Disguise version 2. The original came out in 2000 as Car Robots, Transformers 2000. This is Transformers uh, Robots in Disguise, Platinum Edition, Entertainment Earth exclusive. Now, what's important is this Grimlock here. So this Grimlock is the War for Cybertron Grimlock, or is it War for Cybertron? Fall of Cybertron. It's the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock, but it's heavily remolded. It's got the R.I.D. face and the R.I.D. Beast Mode face. This Bumblebee is the same Bumblebee we've gotten before, only it's in uh, exclusive colors, and it comes with sword. Excellent. The weapons for Grimlock are the pre-existing weapons from the Fall of Cybertron version. So they took Grimlock and they retold him into Grimlock. That's kind of like us taking, uh, we took Cybertron Blur and then retold him into Shattered Glass Blur. And if we had thought about it more, we should have realized that, well, we're just changing the head to make it look like Blur. We should have just picked a better toy. But I'm happy with the toy that we picked. Anyway, this Grimlock came packaged by himself in Japan. It was a big item in Japan. I missed out on it when Takara Tomy released it. Getting it in the gift set was the only way you can get it from Hasbro. Ship. So, we've cut the tape. It's been a while since I've opened a RID toy. Instructions are very plain. I mean, they're, they're almost as plain as the instructions you would see on the top of a G1 box where it says, start, change, change, finish. So here we are. Man, I've really wanted to open this for a long time because I've wanted to play with that Grimlock. I'm finally setting up a lot of my loose figures into the display cases. So, what better time to open this because I've set up a lot of my, my RID figures. Uh, do I have my pliers? No, pliers are MIA. 
I'm gonna use a knife. Yes! Oh, nothing like a fresh blade. Woo! It's like that first sip of tea in the morning. I used to be a really heavy coffee drinker, like four or five cups in the morning. And then I switched to tea. And now I find that coffee is like a once in a while thing and it's like too bitter. All right, here he is, it's Bumblebee. Yes, the show where he was the de facto leader of the Autobots. He's got a smile on his face. I actually don't know if that smile is a new head or not. I'll have to, I'll have to research it. I don't know if I have my regular R.I.D. Bumblebees opened or not. I think I set one up. Might have been the black one. Anyway, Bumblebee. Hey, great. It's, uh, you know, it's a simpler toy, but it's still ten times better to me than uh, Transformers, Bumblebee, Allspark, Cyberverse, Battle for the Energon, Adventure at AOL.com version. Now for the real joy. Yes. I do like Grimlock in this color. It's not it's not G2 color. He was never in this color in G2, but I don't know, the green and black works for Grimlock. I didn't much care for his personality in the show. There we go. But this is a kick-ass toy. I actually got, do I have one here? Yeah, so I actually had bought a few of these because uh, this is the Transformers Combiner Force Grimlock that doesn't combine with anyone because this was more to scale and I was going to put that with my R.E.D. shelf. Um, but I thought, you know what? When I saw this coming out from Takara Tomy, I'm like, that's the one. That's it. Beautiful. Boy, that, that head really works on that toy. Now, there was a remold of this toy. This, is, this was a toy that was uh, designed when I was uh, still working at Hasbro. Uh, the remold of this had a uh, transmetal... Megatron's head on it from Beast Wars and it never came out a few production samples came out uh, on the secondary market with that you know they were unpainted uh, we never had a plan to release it it was just hey it's a head we made an extra head maybe one day we'll get to it they never got to it this mold should still be available I really hope one day they go back and get to it and that is cool so this whole back part I believe is brand new and one thing that I'd never really noticed until right now is this is this is Gino this is the Gino head any Godzilla fans out there Godzilla and name only Gino this is from the uh, Sony was it Godzilla movie starring Matthew Broderick where he played uh, Nick Totopoulos it's amazing, I know that. You know, it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a Godzilla movie. It was just the big giant T-Rex attacks New York movie. If you look at it like that, it's a great movie. Well, considerably. So that, I mean, look at that, look at that chin. Boy, I wish I had my Godzilla figures out. I do appreciate a good Godzilla toy. Every now and again. I will say the shield is a little too small for him. There was a, I think there was a secondary market shield for the War for Cybertron Grimlock with the alternate head and a bigger shield and a bigger sword. But I'm like, do we want to pay that much money just for a bigger shield and sword? I think I just got the head somehow. So there he is. Ah, I'm happy I got this. I mean, that is a great face. It's a little lacking of expression as in relation to how the character was on the show. He needs that Charlie Day look. 
that he had on the show. I mean, that's who Grimlock was. He was Charlie from uh, It's Always Sunny. Hey, let's move on to one of these. There are so many variations on this. So, there is a Skywarp package on this side, Thundercracker package on this side. There is a Skywarp with Thundercracker face. So that's three variations. Uh, I think that's it, yeah. So three, three variations. This is the only variation I have. I have another one that you know I put away, I keep sealed in the library. But I was never able to find the other sets. And I can't confirm, because I know they were sealed, they came sealed, they are legit variations because they were found at retail. Now, I'm sure they were just simple mistakes uh, at the factory. So who knows how many of them there are. But it still counts. It still counts. If it got released at retail, it still counts as an official variant. I have been waiting to open this one too for a while. Lame instructions. Very, very lame. I got my little. So for anyone who uh, who's been following the War for Cybertron uh, siege and then Earthrise, the backer part of uh, the packaging has this little map, right? And you take your little decoder. which is similar, inspired by G1, or you take your G1 decoder if you have one laying around. I always have one laying around. And you just kinda run it through there and... Does it say anything? No? No, it doesn't? Honestly, I don't care. I put them all in a box, and at the end of the day, I'll cut them all out and frame them or something. So, this was an exclusive to Target. Seems a lot of the, see, actually all the exclusives, all the, all the gift sets we're opening tonight are exclusives. This was the only way to get Skywarp Thundercracker domestically. I believe they are coming out via Takara in Japan. But I don't know if they come in the gift set or if they come separately. I think they're a uh, Takara magazine or mall exclusive. I saw them solicited and then it just kind of disappeared. And that was it. And I uh, was never able to pre-order for a set. So if you happen to know, leave a message or email me at cut the tape at tftalk.net. TF -talk Ooh, holy crap. This has the stiffest joints in the world. It's amazing. This one's not as stiff as this one, but this is great. Oh my god, this is better than the actual uh, Starscream that got released in retail. Wow. Wow. I'm really impressed with how stiff the joints are. Even, look, even these parts, the tolerance is really good on this. Wow. I think this just, Thundercracker is one of my favorite characters, by the way, because of how he was portrayed in the IDW series, where he wanted to be a screenwriter and he just didn't understand, uh, I would say, human vernacular. And uh, he ended up becoming a screenwriter and then Skywarp ended up joining the G.I. Joe and partnering with... Uh, I think it was Rock and Roll. And Rock and Roll was the only G.I. Joe that was allowed to fly inside of Skywarp. So after the war had ended, Skywarp 
ends up becoming a member of G.I. Joe. It was a great story. Three great stories. They had captured him and they were trying to use him for his teleportation ability. And he's like, is that, is that all you think about me as a teleporter? I'm so much more. And then uh, I would be remiss to not mention Buster, who was uh, Thundercracker's pet dog. Uh, I should really get a 3D printed version of Buster. If anybody knows where I can get that, hit me up. Excellent. Very good tolerances on this. Wow. That has made my day. I am super happy with that. Moving on. This was acquired today. Yes, this is another Tarjay exclusive. This is the Pesticons. Transformers, Bumblebee, Adventure, Cyberverse, Cybertronian Villains, uh, Gruesome Chomp Action Gift Set. It comes with a... Gro it's 2020, the year of Grotusque. It all starts... Some people say Grotusque really started back in, like, 87, when the original Grotusque figure came out. I say no. I say the reign of Grotusque began when the... Was it Buzzclaw repaint from Beast Wars came out in the Transformers Universe toy line as a two pack with, gosh, I want to say maybe it was Tankor from Beast Machines. And then here we are, years and years later, there's a Grotusque figure in general. There's a little Grotusque head. And there's a whole Grotusque Generations figure. And, uh,. Now there's a uh, Cyberverse Grotusk, and now there's a Grotusk repaint, and there's little Grotusk mini transforming figures, and uh, what's the other one? The Cyberverse Tiny Turbos. Tiny Turbo Grotusk. Why not? So speaking of Tiny Turbos, I don't know if this is the Tiny Turbo Grotusk just repainted, or if it's an all-new Grotusk. And I haven't gotten to this part in the show yet. So I don't know what the story is, is if Grotusk is a villain and Pesticons makes me think that there's like a whole bunch of them like Insecticons and maybe Grotusk is like the Bob of the Insecticons, which that would be a pretty cool story. Bob was a uh, Insecticon that uh, I wouldn't say was befriended, but more adopted by Sunstreaker in the IDW comics. Hmm. I had this uh, spaghetti with basil pesto, pesto, pesto tonight that I made, and it's got like that one little leaf of pesto stuck in my teeth, and it's it's driving me crazy. So here it is. Here is Decepticon. Repugnus. So this is the same figure as the... Um, oh man, I just had him out here. The... Um, uh, Mega Action... Is that what the... Mega Attackers? Yeah, the Mega Attackers. The little ones that come carded, like on a little rectangle. Let's hope these never go on clearance because I will buy the shit out of it. Here he is. And now I'm going to attempt to transform him. It's supposed to be some kind of spring loaded action. Hey, there it is. Oh, there's, oh, I can't. That's what it is. That's what it is. I think I opened Grotusk on another episode. I opened him, talked about him for two seconds, put him on the shelf. I probably won't pick up that toy again for another couple years. That's not true. I, I have a dusting routine that I go through. I feel like this is just like drawing everyone's attention. Anyway, Grotusk 
in delicious Decepticon colors, they work for him. If there was a G2 Grotusk, that would be the colors. I like that. Now, we get three. I think this is the Tiny Turbo one. If it's not, please forgive me. I don't claim to have 100% accurate information 100% of the time, but 50% of the time, I'm accurate 100% of the time, so. Oh, look at that. They're like, mommy, daddy, mommy, baby. So we have our little Grotusk, little Pesticon. She stands up. And there he is in robot mode. There's a uh, lime flavored. This is a uh, cinnamon, you know, fireball flavor. That color also works for grotesque. And uh, then we have, um, I would call this mountain mist. And the arms don't move. He's got waist articulation, but the arms don't move. I wonder what the millimeter, is that three millimeters? We can put like little three millimeter weapons in there. Hmm. You know what? I wanna say these are new. I wanna say this is not the tiny turbo version because it's got a Decepticon symbol molded into the chest. So maybe these are made in the style of the tiny turbos just for the set, or maybe it's the tiny turbo and they just made a new chest for it. But, well, I guess they would do that if they're Pesticons and it has the Autobot one. I just lost one. Mold it in. Well, um, hey, you know what? I was gonna open one of these too, but <sighs> I think it's wine o'clock. Yeah. Definitely. Anyway, that was cut the tape. Uh, I'm still working in my basement. I know things are still a little messy, but it's actually getting better. Um, it's getting there. It's getting there. I got this case over here. I got to paint this case and then set up the figures inside. I think it's going to be my uh, G1 reissues. Uh, and then I don't know what else is going in there. I spent the last couple days without power, uh, so it felt really, really good to shower. But that's unrelated to what's happening in the basement. Anyway, wash your hands, wear a mask. If you see someone not wearing a mask, approach them in a nice way and say, hey, for everyone's safety, please wear a mask. And remember to vote. Remember to vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just telling you to vote. Be kind to people, and always remember to cut the tape. Ciao.